If you ask someone how to start learning the MD system, Jen Ali will say, learn the ATM32. But here is the trick, many beginners tried it and wish after the few days. So, the ATM32 is truly beginner friendly or it's just only for professional users. Let's find out with the real ATM32 board right here on my desk. To make this video easy to follow, I reckon it into four parts. First, what is ATM32 actually is and why you see it everywhere. The second, the real reason that the ATM32 is very popular from the hobby project to industrial product. And the ATM32 is good for beginner, so I will combine them with the common microcontroller like Arduino, EAP32, and so on. And finally, which ATM32 series is good for you without getting overheld by hundreds of options? Alright, let's get started. Before we talk about why the ATM32 is so popular, let's take a wee look about the company behind it. ST Micro Electronics or Symbol ST is the European Semiconductor Giant from the merge of the two nation semiconductor company. Thomson Semiconductor from France and HGS Micro Electronics from Italy. Today, ST built the massive range of the electronic component sensor and one of their famous reaction in the family of microcontroller we're talking about, the ATM32. ATM32 is a family of 32 microcontroller built on ARM Cortex Core. And one of the reasons it becomes so popular is the huge range of performance level available. On the low end, you have the Cortex M0 and 0 Lux more strip and buffers for simple tests. On the mid-range ATM32, you got that M3 and M4, and at the high end, you got the Cortex M7 microcontroller, extremely fast and capable. ST is also adopting the new core, like the ATM32 W series for the wireless application. And if you go one step further, ST also has the ATM32 MB series. There is not a microcontrol anymore. But the micro processor with the Cortex A core and it can run the Linux. You can be tiny ATM32 for something simple like reading the sensor or a powerful one that handles complex graphics, USB high speed, and camera interface, or even the embedded AI. And that flexibility is why you will find the ATM32 in front, smartwatcher, 3D printer medical device, industrial controller, and thousands of commercial gadgets. One of the reasons is that ST Digital Smart Microcontroller, they build the entire ecosystem around them and back it with the excellent documentation. And get what? They all completely free. At the center of everything is the ATM32 QMS. If you ever configure the microcontroller manual, you don't know how painful it is. Lock, BLL, CBIO, Timer, Watchdog, API, I2C, and every chip has a different set of the peripheral. Normally, it can take the hour before you can write the first line of code. But with the ATM32 QMH, you can configure everything in a minutes from the clear and the visual interface. Just enter the microcontroller you are using, pick your oscillator so start in the peripheral, and enable the peripheral. No resistor level had this. And honestly, one thing I really love about the ATM32 QMS is that you can also use this like the visual datasheet. Instead of reading the hundreds of the PDF page, you can just see the configuration is right in front of you. And it has avoided so many silly mistakes. His generic code and the ATM32 QMS create the list structure project for you, then you can jump train into writing the real functionality. The next bit here is the ATM32 QIDE is a full C and C learner development platform, compiler, debug, and project manager all designed for the ATM32. And because it's by on a slip, so anyone who used the slip before will be right here at home. To be honest, it's not perfect. Debug a very large variable can slow its down and delay. In those case, IDE like Kelsey's Durant Smoother. But considering because the ATM32 IDE is completely free, so it's still the excellent tool and it's getting get better. Trust me, you don't want to know the price or the Kelsey license. And then the ATM32 Q programmer. This is the ATM office tool for flashing, debugging, and communication with the microcontroller. 
whether to using the AWT, GTAC, or even the chip PDU mod. You can also use the ATM32Q Framer to configure the special register, like the dual band, dual boot, or swap band. And if you want to design the user interface without writing turn on the low level graphics code, SD gives you the touch GFS. It's a wrap and drop UI builder with the widgets like the bus thumb, light, wrap, and image. You can also create the custom component with the container. If you ever use the Swellite Studio QT Design or the WinForm c touch GFS will feel light at home. And again, it's completely free. Another message reason that the ATM32 is very popular in the community. And honestly, this might be a stronger factor at all. Searching anything about the ATM32 tutorial, library, and showbox setting, and you will got the hundreds of results, use tools, GitHub, Stack Overload, Forum, and Log. For the beginner, that's about it, right? So you never feel stuck or alone. And for the company, it means hiring the engineer with the ATM32 experience is much easy. A question I get a lot is, is the ATM32 is good for beginner? And the short answer is yes, absolutely. But let's talk about why. If you are coming from the Arino, ATM32 maybe feel a bit overhead at first. With the Arino, you write a few lines of code, click upload, and you're done. But with the ATM32, suddenly you have something like the log tree, memory configuration, peripheral. Basically, you see how the real microcontroller actually works. A good news, you adapt much faster than you think. One thing very for the beginner is that the ATM32 chip is very consistent around the whole family. When you learn one ATM32, you can move to other model without starting again. Now let's compare the ATM32 with the other popular option. First, the Arino. Actually, it's not the microcontroller family. It looks like the last form built on the top of the AVR microcontroller or even the ATM32 itself. Arino removes the complexity. It is very good for teaching, but it also has a lot of control. So, as soon as you want the higher performance, real time behavior, or industrial reliable, you will weekly ROS, and that's where ATM32 step in. Next is the ESP32. If your project needs the Wi Fi or Bluetooth, ESP32 is keen, no question. But in the microcontroller performance sphere, ATM32 wins in many areas. Better real-time rebounder, lower latency, stronger ADC, more consistent peripheral. That's why you will see the ASP32 in the IoT gadgets and the ATM32 in the industrial product. Then we have the PIC, AVR, and the Ogun AT51 family. They're cheap and cheaper and extremely well understood and they will be around forever. They similarly cannot match the speed, feature, ecosystem, and models to lean that ATM32 provide. That's why a lot of companies have been ran away from them. And that is exactly why you see ATM32 everywhere. One of the bigger questions beginner ask is, there are so many ATM32 family, so which one should I pick? And yes, the ATM32 lineup can overhaul at first. F0, F1, F3, F4, F7, L1, L4, A7, and the newer A5. It looks like the alphabet sub. But here's the good news. You don't need to understand every chip. You just need to build one that is beginner friendly, wide support, and easy to work with. If you want the easy starting boy ATM32103 Loop Build or Snoop Slayer, this is the last beginner chip. Chips, tables, turn of tutorials, turn of assemble, and very forgiving learning curve. It's all but still personally fine for learning the ATM32 ecosystem. And if you want something modern, low code beginner, so the ATM32 G0 is a good choice. There are the newer entry level chips from ATM Micro Electronics. They are cheap, low power, and have much linear peripheral compared to the ATM32 F1 and F0 series. 
each one more performance for the DSP Refix or the Pencil Test. The HDM32 S4 is a good choice. It is great for the audio processing, more offensive control, and the simple UI. And if you want bad on the best, so the ATM 32 a 7 is it looks like the flagship series, extremely fast, great ADC, and advanced peripheral. But it's not necessary for beginner unless you start getting the high-end allegation. If you want a recommendation without overthinking it, start with the ATM 32G0 or ATM 32F4. Once you learn one ATM32, you can move to other models easy because the architecture and tools stay consistent around the Einstein family. Whether you learn in the MD system, building prototype, or design the full commercial device. So that's why ATM32 is not just the popular, but it becomes the default choice for many engineers around the world. Thank you for watching the video and I hope it gives you a clearly picture of ATM32 ecosystem. See you on the next video.